so dear friends uh, we are discussing the multiple choice questions for those of you who are appearing for uh, independent directors exam and uh, first question before us is this assets of a company belong to a the assets of a company belongs to a is it a company or shareholders or directors or promoters that is the question now uh, what is the correct answer in this the correct answer is company what you must understand the company is a creation of law it is an artificial judicial entity though in the physical appearance it doesn't have the eyes of law it has a, a legal existence it can uh, own the assets and owe the liabilities so when you are dealing with a company everyone must note that he is dealing with the company uh, ex limited or private limited and not with the shareholders or directors or promoters so this is uh, this concept was laid down in solomon and solomon was his case you know the case is such that uh, solomon was dealing in uh, leather goods in uk and uh, he converted this as a sole proprietor business into a, a limited company by adding six of his children siblings uh, sons and wife in as directors uh, totally seven they formed the company and the business was transferred to the company so the assets and liabilities are owned by the company in return the company has given him huge consideration in the form of shares and he also owed uh, he also gave loan to the company by mortgage blood uh, debentures were issued to him for mortgage to the assets of the company so later on the limited company was operating and it went into losses it could not pay off its liabilities to the unsecured creditors so what were the amount available was uh, uh, there is only little amount is available and uh, solomon being a debenture holder made a claim that he should get the first priority over the unsecured creditors so the other unsecured creditors have contended that what is this fellow this company is as good as uh, his company uh, his children and all the other shareholders are kept there but the house of lords uh, they took the decision that he is a juristic person it is different from the shareholders promoters or anybody it has a separate existence it has a common seal so therefore it is the company which owns the assets so therefore if you are giving loan to the company you can only claim from the company if you the assets of the company does not belong to shareholders and the shareholders of the company have certain rights and obligations if you are a shareholder uh, and they are uh, having 1000 shares of 10 rupees each 10000 rupees if you are paid 6000 you are supposed to pay the balance 4000 so your liability is limited to that 4000 that was the concept of limited liability companies came into picture so as a student you are going to appear for the independent directors exam the answer is very clear assets of a company belongs to only the company it does not belong to shareholders who have only partial rights directors are those people who are there to manage the company and promoters are those people who create the company once the company comes into existence then the role of promoter ceases unless these people get some shares in return for the work done or the pre incorporation uh, contracts they have entered into or expenses made by them that will be written in the articles of association right
Now let's go to the next question. The first directors of the company are naturally appointed by the promoters. So for the second question, the answer is C, promoters. Because a public company has to be created. Someone must create the company by preparing memorandum of association, articles of association, and bring in the uh, enter into contracts with various parties and then infuse some capital for it. And everything that person does to create this company is called as a promoter. And naturally promoters will appoint uh, someone and someone or themselves as directors. There's nothing wrong in that. So the first directors of the public limited company are going to be appointed only by the promoters because the shareholders have not come into existence and uh, the government shareholders and public public has no role in the public company uh, it is only the shareholders who uh, are created by the company when it is shares the promoters also will be allotted some shares for the work done by them once the share capital and shareholders comes into existence then the way in which company has to be run uh, that will start i mean it's a democratic function you all know so the answer for the question two is the first directors of a public company are appointed by the promoters now how many names can be applied uh, through form IN, INC 32 you know every one director must apply to one form companies are now allotted a unique number CIN uh, in addition to their name that is called a CIN corporate uh, identity number and um, this is uh, a 12 21 digit uh, alpha numerical number uh, that we all know that and uh, independent uh, directors are supposed to have um, true independence and uh, uh, this is based on the fair pairs of the fundamental principles he says then what are the principles he's saying is saying that um, first one is integrity and due care and uh, integrity and objectivity integrity and professional competence objectivity and professional behavior he, for an independent director you have to be independent unbiased for that how do you say that you are independent and uh, uh, because most of the decisions that a person takes are based on democratic functioning majority and in this uh, directors, everybody will give their own opinions and uh, based on which decisions are taken. And uh, as independent person, you are not influenced. You are not supposed to work for others. And uh, so integrity and objectivity are the basis on which uh, you will be asked to, uh, you know, you will be tested for that. So, integrity and objectivity are the pair of pairs which will make the person independent. Now, what is expected of an independent director? He is coming into the board as a neutral person, whereas the others will have some interest. There may be nominees of uh, different uh, uh, stakeholders. So they will have to represent their interest and uh, so a decision that is uh, involved that we have to award a contract so interested parties will be there so they will be bothered about their interest but an independent director is introduced with a view to bring some basis for discussion and uh, he should not be uh, acting like a person with this, some ulterior interest. They say uh, whenever a judgment is conflict of interest should not be there. He has to be fair. 
he is not forced by others uh, he should not be influenced he should not work for others and is a man as you know uh, good uh, knowledge and therefore he has to apply that knowledge he should not misinterpret the facts and uh, he should contribute to the fair uh, decision making for example if uh, somebody a decision has to be taken um, concerning the in the naturally board is something a uh, policy decisions are taken so whenever uh, decisions are going to be taken as an independent director he is supposed to uh, be responsible to the stakeholders also and in his contribution he should be fair unbiased he is not uh, uh, he should not have conflict of interest he should be a man of high moral and ethical values in taking the judgments and advising them therefore and objectivity means you know for example financial statements are there and financial statements everything should be backed up by evidence to prove that it has taken place and it is not just a, a cooked up figures similarly uh, here uh, when you say is objectivity all decisions should be backed up by a data and uh, that is what is uh, important these are the issues we are going to take next uh, fifth question sixth question and uh, In an invitation to public offering any securities in case of private company are naturally prohibited and uh, allowed acceptable none of them above b c d not applicable and uh, you know you um, invitation to public whenever you are uh, raising money from public you all know that uh, you have to issue prospectus and the prospectus is the golden statement which uh, makes clear about uh, the company a fair uh, the investor must take a decision based on the issues presented in the prospectus how what the company is doing how the company has performed and what is it the company going to do with this money and what are the likely prospects of this company is growing based on which a considered opinion can be taken so that is all regulated therefore a private company Uh, cannot uh, um, uh, invite offer securities uh, um, invitation to public offering any securities that means i am issuing debentures i am issuing preference shares so money is collected from the public uh, listed companies uh, they are not listed companies so that means uh, there should be some barriers and uh, some full proof system um, has to be there so private companies are more like uh, uh, partnership companies uh, managed by some main persons but at the same time giving an importance of limited liability so that the business can grow better the risk issue is the main thing that works on a private limited company um next question before us is what is the nominal value of a share the you come across companies where the 1 rupee share 2 rupee share is quoted at uh, in the market at 500 rupees 600 rupees like that so that is called market price of the share but the book value of the share is always going to be called as nominal value is the value at which it is issued for example 10 rupee share that's called as book value issued at par nominal value and if it is issued above 10 rupees 12 rupees then the 2 rupees is called as premium if it is issued as less than 10 rupees it's called as issued at discount but then market price is the price at which it is dealt in the stock exchanges that will depend on several factors one of that is the reserves the company will have the earning potential of the company and then you know the price earning ratios etc so therefore a uh, nominal value of the share is nothing but book value of the share 
and B, the fixed amount that represents the notional value of the share worth. No. Then current uh, market value of the share as in the stock exchange. No. Maximum value that can be paid for a by share, by share by a buyer. Buyer will pay maximum or non minimum if it is only going to be listed in the market, uh, the stock exchanges. That is what you are going to pay unless you are going for a bulk purchase or buyback arrangements. So, that eight questions we have answered, and uh, let us continue for now.